From the moment you wake up, you are consuming. The smartphone that tells you it's time to get up, your favorite brand of tea or coffee that you put into your mug to make your morning brew, the very hardware and software that we are using right now. We are constantly consuming. And there has never been a more exciting time to study consumer behavior. Today we'll look at just what consumer behavior means and how digital and technological transformations are reshaping consumption today. Acts of consumption accompany us throughout our entire lives and they can be broken down into three main types of activity. Acquisition, usage and disposition. Take acquisition, for instance, the means through which we obtain goods and services, such as via a point of sale. This is being transformed by digital technologies to allow things that I'm sure we've all been familiar with by now, like online shopping, chatbots powered by artificial intelligence, or subscription service platforms like Netflix and Spotify. These types of services in particular have largely replaced traditional means of owning formats like DVDs, CDs, or even videotapes. And we could think of many reasons why. The efficiency of digitization, the portability that comes with digital devices, and the affordable but extensive cloud storage that we now have access to, just to name a few. But what does this mean for the consumer? Research is starting to suggest that we may actually value physical goods more than digital goods. And this has important implications for business because it means that for many consumers, they might be willing to spend more for the physical visions of a product in contrast to the digital vision within the same product category. And this can help us to understand the revival of analog formats such as vinyl records nowadays. So really, this is not mean all doom and gloom for traditional marketing. Rather, we should see this as a challenge to investigate consumers better, to anticipate their needs more accurately. And we should take this as an opportunity really to become more creative in the ways that we can cater to those ever-changing needs. A very nice example that sort of blends the two worlds, the real physical world and the digital world, is the use of augmented reality in mobile shopping apps. Hair dye brands and makeup and cosmetic brands are starting to experiment with virtual try-ons so that consumers can try on a particular shade of lipstick, for instance, without needing to necessarily physically do so in store. And while all these considerations and strategies help us to understand how to better sell to the customer, what happens after the product has been bought? And this is what the second building block of consumer behavior deals with, usage. Think of all the products that you own and use. You might find that some of them are more disposable than others. Some are more replaceable than others. This is because we are engaged in relationships with all the things that we own and consume. Take a pair of running shoes and a runner. This may be like a best friend type of relationship. The shoes are there to support you to achieve your goals. In contrast, you might have a secret affair type of relationship with other types of products, like a guilty pleasure TV show or a notoriously unhealthy snack, especially if you've been trying to avoid these. What about your relationship to things like Google, the internet in general, social networking sites? These types of digital interfaces may present more complex relationships with us manifesting even as a paradox. And a very well-established paradox of technology is that it enables both freedom and enslavement. Taking a closer look at this paradox now, on the one hand, surely we can see that digital tech allows us new freedoms that we previously had not been able to access. For example, we can communicate with people from all over the world instantly. This was especially important in the year 2020, when really the use of the internet to communicate was truly the only safe way for a lot of us to connect with colleagues, friends, and family. And we know how important this was for our mental health and well-being. Digital tech in this instance liberated us virtually from our physical lockdowns. But on the other hand, we start to become enslaved or over-reliant on digital technologies as we truly depend on it for so many different aspects of our daily lives. 
Because of this, some experts are starting to question if we may become too satiated too often from things like media binging or substantive or even excessive levels of digital consumption. We're starting to see things cropping up like digital detox or going offline or taking a break from social media and even micro-regulation tools like screen time management all cropping up in response to our non-stop access to digital consumption. For businesses, this freedom enslavement paradox of digital consumption can facilitate super exciting opportunities for brands to communicate with their customers online via social media. But at the same time, this comes at a great risk because consumers, of course, now have the freedom to post almost anything they want online. And we've seen that this can get quite catastrophic almost overnight with things like the rise of cancel culture in recent years. Regardless, brands and consumers alike need to realize that they are responsible for managing their brands online. Individuals like you and I are brands online too, personal brands. So we need to manage and be responsible for what we share and disseminate via social media, for example. Nowadays, consumer behavior is evolving to see the consumer as more than just a consumer, but also a citizen who has rights of their own. And importantly, this can allow us to now reflect on things more like freedom of speech, consumer rights and ethics. Ethics and sustainability are also becoming increasingly important in regards to the third and final building block of consumer behavior, disposition. From a marketing perspective, we view consumers as irrational, driven by a multitude of factors, ranging from emotion, social influence, and cognitive biases that we're all susceptible to, just to name a few. And while this has not changed for consumers of today, what has changed is just how much information we have access to. So think of making a high involvement purchase, such as for an electronic device. We can now consult online reviews, unboxing videos and tutorials. Or if we want to decide what to eat, we can look up the nutritional data or track this via an app. If we even want to buy a brand of bananas at the supermarket, we can look up how the different brands have been sourced. So what was once a greenwashing tactic has now really become more of a self-reflection for many consumers before buying a product. Do I need this product? Where was it made? Where did it come from? And how can I dispose of it without adversely affecting the environment? These are just some of the types of questions that a typical Gen Z consumer is now starting to ask more regularly. And the answers to these types of questions are becoming increasingly transparent. And I even used as brand differentiators for consumers to signal to themselves and to their peers that they are more ethical consumers. Fast fashion is a very good example of the type of business that has really had to make big changes now in regards to their sustainability in order to keep attracting Gen Z consumers. These consumers want the trends, but don't want to contribute to the waste problems that come from fast fashion consumption. We're also seeing trends of minimalism in response really to consumerism and materialism. Declutter your home, own less, buy less, and feel more towards fewer possessions. But what does this mean for the future of consumer product relationships? We can really start to see now how these three building blocks are all really closely linked into understanding consumer behavior. So something to think about is how can very traditional businesses keep up in an increasingly digitized world? And in the not so distant future, what does the next generation of consumers want and need? And how can we cater to these needs as responsibly as possible? <laughs>